Hey there. Let's go over how to analyze details from a blue screen memory dump. Okay, so let's begin with this blue screen memory dump that I got from Reddit. The user that posted this memory dump said that the blue screen occurred after closing a video game. What happened was the user pressed Alt F4 in the game, the game exited and then the computer proceeded to blue screen. Now with this kind of memory dump, there might be some personal information in the dump. So because of that, I will not post a link to the memory dump in this video and I will actually censor anything on the screen that has any personal information to protect the privacy of the um, person who donated this memory dump. This memory dump is pretty rare. That's why I asked permission to get this memory dump in order to make this video. I do not want any personal information leaking out. And if you do see any personal information, please tell me and I'll take this video down. If you're unsure how to capture a memory dump from Windows, I have a video in this series. I, I made one quite a while ago on how to configure Windows to capture memory dumps during a blue screen. Just configure Windows to automatically capture mini dumps and that should suffice. Okay, so let's begin. I'm gonna switch to an instance of Windybug over here and I'm just gonna open the memory dump in which I already have it in the uh, list over here. And let's just wait for the dump to open. Okay, so the first thing we do after loading symbols is we run analyze minus V. So analyze might take a while, so I'll fast forward the video to when analyze is ready. Okay, so analyze is ready. So the first thing I see is that I see a broken stack over here. Now, there's something to be concerned about is that we can't actually see the symbols at the bottom of the stack. And this is because some of these symbols genuinely do not exist as public symbols. But we will progress further and come back to this problem if we need to see the stack. Generally, with memory dumps of this nature, because they are blue screens, this part of the stack will be something internal to Windows in which even if you can see what it is, it's, it's not going to help that much. It's better to try to understand what's on the top of the stack. So let's just scroll up to the exception, which would be over here. So within Windybug, there is a very handy feature when we run Analyze. The exception code is translated into a string. So this string says video scheduler internal error and it's 119. Uh, we don't really need to care about 119, but we need to care about this error code over here. Now, one thing about these error codes is that they are written for computer programmers in order to find errors in the header files. They're not actually written for the public to read. What I mean is that even though it says video scheduler internal error, don't assume it is anything to do with the scheduler or it's anything to do with an internal error. This string is actually meant for a programmer to take and go and find in the source code. That's what it's meant to do. That's why a lot of these error strings, they look very peculiar, like IRQ not less than equal, or they, they have bizarre names on it. It's because they are meant to be searched. So if I look at the error, I have two arguments which are filled up, number 10 for the subtype, and something that looks like a memory address, and two other parameters that are not used. I will use this to discover more about this error before I diagnose more into the memory dump. So let's go ahead and do that. So with this exception over here, Searching the Microsoft Developer Driver Kit or the DDK for this error, that, that's very tedious. But there's an easier way to go about it, which is we just go to Google Chrome and type this in. Put in the error message that you have here and type in MSDN. What this does is that it searches the MSDN uh, database for the page that Microsoft has documented for this error code. Now, if you don't put in MSDN at the back, MSDN means Microsoft Solution Developer Network or something of that nature. If you don't put in MSDN at the back, you'll still get links. But here's the problem. You're going to get a lot of links of people complaining to various forums like NVIDIA forums or you get fix or, or half a dozen of this stuff over here, which probably is never going to help you at all. I would say always go to the Microsoft page first. So Microsoft is pretty handy. If you put MSDN in your search, it always gives you the first link to go to Microsoft. So if I click on the first link, I'm going to go to the exact page in which Microsoft documented this exception so that I don't need to go and search the Microsoft Development Kit for what this exception actually means. Okay, so at the Microsoft Developer page, um, what I want to do is I want to look at the arguments. That's the, the best clue. 
So if I scroll down, what Microsoft does is they take their source code, they take all the parameters that they can figure out and they write some description here for the public to read. Now, is it really written for the public to read or is it for programmers to read? I don't really know, but we can try to guess from there what was the intention of this exception. Not everything is documented because some of the flags, you really have to look at the source code to figure out what they mean. But you can generally guess based on the family of errors that exist. So if I look at the parameters over here, I see that some of the parameters are documented. So let's compare with the subtype that we have in the dump and compare with this table to try to get an estimate on what it is. So let's switch to Windybug to see what the uh, subtype is. So the subtype is 10. Now, um, Windybug doesn't actually put the prefix in the front, but um, this is hex. Um, I don't know why it's hex. It just is. So it is hex 10. So if I go back to Chrome, um, I see that hex 10, hex 10, hex 10, hex 10. Oh, wait a minute. There is no hex 10. Now, this is common. What's happening is that some of the exceptions are actually bundled as internal error states. So I can see here that if it is uh, 0x4, it's an internal state. If it's, oh, wait a minute. If it's 1000, it's an internal state. If it's 10,000, it's an internal state. Because when it's 100, it's also an internal state. And when it's 10, it's also an internal state. What it means is that anytime it is a value of 10, 100, 1000, etc, etc, it's probably an internal state. That means we cannot use this table to determine the exact subtype. The reason for that is sometimes it's not documented. If something is has a proper type, like a proper value, Microsoft will make the attempt to document it. But if it's not a proper value or if it's some kind of intermediary value, it will not be documented here. We got to look at the source code in order to figure out what this header actually means. However, we are not stuck. What we can do is we can read more about the modules involved. And based on the modules involved, we can analyze deeper into the memory dump, even though we don't know what exact subtype. But if you can find out where it happened, we can kind of deduce what's going on. So let's scroll a bit down and see what it says down here. So some of these MSDN pages, they're just too long. So what Microsoft does is it breaks it down into smaller modules over here. So I have gone ahead and read some of these modules over here to just go deeper and deeper. Let me just show you an example of some of them. I'm just going to open some of them in uh, different browser pages. Now with this documentation, um, this documentation is written for computer programmers. So some of them, they go pretty deep. Some of them explain concepts that uh, they're probably not relevant. Like I clicked a, a bunch of these just to go inside to just see if there's anything relevant that I can search in this memory dump. But what I am looking for is actually not a description of what's happening, but I'm looking for things like modules. I want to see modules because what I want to do is I want to identify where the memory dump is originating from. Because I do not want to dig into the source code at this time, I just want to find the module where it's going from to get a clue of what's happening. So when I was digging around, I found that the memory management modules, um, they all have a similar name for DiraX, which is DX followed by some acronyms. Uh, these names look weird, but they're not weird. They, it, they're just naming conventions. All the DiraX modules have the DX in the front. It is because Windows DLLs get put into one location and they don't want to override. And hence, they, they give new and unique names per module. So I found that uh, some of the modules here, they do have names. So I'm going to search the memory dump for these modules to try to assess what happened and which module originated the memory dump. Now, in some of the documentation, we might end up with some explanations that have com objects on them. Like, for example, if I open up some of these links over here, these are all enums within com objects. Um, I, I'm not going to explain what are com objects at this moment. We, we don't need to learn any of this. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go back to Windybug and just find the modules to assess where this occurred. So let me just switch back to Windybug. So now within Windybug, if we go down Analyze, Analyze has got a cool and handy feature. What it does is whenever there's a memory dump, it tries to figure out uh, where the memory dump occurred by just analyzing the stack and making an assessment. So if we look at the module over here, the module on the top over here, WinDebug assesses it as DXGMMS2, which is the memory manager that is used in DirectX. So if I click on it and I look at the um, contents of it, so LMVM DXGMMS2 will show the uh, module description. So if I look at the module description, this is part of DirectX graphics. So I know that 
through the user's report of how this blue screen occurred, it has something to do with a video game closing. It really lines up that DirectX had an issue. So let's go ahead and analyze more to try to get into the root cause of why this could have happened. So if I scroll up to the um, stack over here, I see that DX GMS2, um, there is a watchdog. Now, the watchdog module within the kernel, it does a lot of uh, things. But one of the things it does is it monitors whether the commands being sent occur in a timely manner. If they do not occur in a timely manner, a blue screen will occur. This is so that if hardware doesn't respond or if software doesn't respond to an offer to read or write data to hardware, a blue screen will occur. So it's quite common that whenever you have a crash in certain DataX, you will have the watchdog on the top because the watchdog is the is kind of like the module within the interrupts that uh, make this work. So if we analyze the parameters of these interrupts, we might be able to find which module was running within DataX or which part of DataX was causing the problem to try to make a better assessment. Now, with some exceptions, uh, we do have a clue. Uh, what Microsoft does is that whenever an exception occurs, it tries to put the memory address of whatever caused the exception. So in this case, it gave this memory address over here. Now, through experience, I know that this memory address, just by looking at it with the Fs in the front, the four Fs in the front, this is an address loaded into a module. And how I know that is just experience. So if I type LM and I look at all the loading uh, initial addresses of the different modules over here, you'll notice that they're all sequential. This is correct. What happens in Windows is that when a module loads, the next module cannot actually load immediately behind. There's an interval. So it loads a module and then after a little bit of a gap to make the boundary, it will load the next module. So that means that each of these modules are actually sequentially loaded based on the size. So if I know this memory address over here and I can find this address within the list of modules, I can make an assessment that that DLL has the code that incurred this exception. Let's go ahead and save these values into the uh, notebook. So I'm going to put a note over here and I'm going to scroll down to all the modules and try to find this memory address. So if I look at the address is FFFAD and if I look at the addresses over here is FFF8484 and then look at this, it crosses over from 84 to FF. That means this address is within the boundary of CDD and HELP. Now, how is it so that it jumps so much here? Um, there is a feature in Windows in which a DLL can actually have an initial base address. It can basically realign itself and probably HAL has got an initial base. So that's why there's such a gap. Now, if I click on CDD over here to see what exactly is CDD, I'm going to get that it is the canonical display driver. That's a clue because the display driver is part of DataX. It does interact with DataX a lot and it is a clue of what could have happened. Now. With these clues, let's go ahead and analyze the stack one last time. So we know that the stack on the stack, that this module is a DataX memory manager. And we know that the handler that caused the crash is the canonical display driver. So at this point, we can make a preliminary analysis. Okay, so I got to be a bit careful here. When analyzing one memory dump, we should not draw a conclusion immediately unless we have a specific error code. Because if we do, we are prematurely guessing what could be the issue. What we know is the canonical display driver was involved in the crash. We know DataX was involved in the crash. And we know the scenario in which the user pressed Alt F4 and went back to the desktop. What we do not know is that the root cause of the crash is an exact error code because the subtype is not documented correctly and we do not know whether the bottom of the stack was there. However, we know a few things. We know that the DataX kernel should not be running and we know that all these interrupts should not be running because the game is already closed. So we have a clue that since this mechanics was running and while it was doing something, we know that the user pressing Alt F4 may have triggered the condition that causes this blue screen. So my preliminary assessment would be that when the user press Alt F4, DataX tried to unload all the graphics. However, the canonical display driver has to render the Windows desktop. So during that time, it is juggling two tasks. And during the juggling of the two tasks, it failed to respond quickly enough to DataX, causing a crash. 
Now, reproducing this is going to be very difficult, but the clues are pointing towards the direction that Dara X was trying to do something. I'm going to guess it was unloading assets and the canonical display driver could not respond quickly enough. My assessment is if the user were to have quit the game by going to the main menu, waiting for the game to unload whatever he needed to do, and then closing the game from there, this problem would not occur because the computer has a lot of time to unload assets. This is just from my personal experience trying to write applications that have Alt F4 to close very quickly. They tend to be more difficult because the assets have to be unloaded very quickly in order to get back to the Windows desktop. Now, with this analysis, uh, we cannot draw an exact conclusion on one memory dump. I will require a few more memory dumps before we can draw a direct conclusion. But I'm pretty sure the clues are that the graphics driver did not respond quickly enough to DiraX while the desktop was loading because I can see that the watchdog timer was involved, I can see that DiraX was involved doing something and I can see the canonical display driver was the handler that caused the crash. We can rule out issues to do with hard disk, RAM, CPU. We can rule out a whole swath of issues that could have happened because we know the canonical display driver and the DiraX memory manager was where the exception occurred. So I would say that there is no hardware problem with this computer. There is no hardware problem at all, but it was just that Alt F4 needs to run really quick and that's why it crashed. I have recommended to the user that provided this dump to just exit the game normally and not use Alt F4. If this exception occurs again, we can take a look at it, but I'm fairly confident it's just one of those random issues that just happens due to timing and it's very hard to diagnose these kind of issues. I'm just going to guess it's probably an application that just has too much video memory or too many assets and that's why this occurs. Anyway, that is the gist of how I start a preliminary analysis of memory dumps. I don't actually find the root cause on the first blue screen because it's very difficult to get a blue screen in which the memory dump is exactly at a particular point. Most of the time, you just get a clue of where it could be. If I get a few memory dumps with the same location and I can repeat it, then I try to find a root cause of what's going on. It just could be random. And so I'm making the assumption that the first memory dump is probably the random memory dump. Anyway, let me know in the comments below if you look at memory dumps and go to MSDN or if you know any tool that can just simplify this process. I know there are a few tools that you can use where you can just put in the error code and you can get a description. But I prefer to just go to MSDN because in case Microsoft just updates the pages, I don't have to bother updating any tool. Just searching MSDN seems to work for me. Gentle reminder to subscribe, hit that bell icon and give me a like if you like the content. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.